Welcome back into an off-season edition of Ravens Unscripted. On the couch, we've got Garrett, John, and Cliff of Ravens Media. And guys, we're facing some questions about this defense and decisions to be made in the off-season. Garrett, first up, C.J. Mosley. He's been the anchor of this defense for a long time now, but he's facing an offseason where he could command some big money in the free agency market. How do you see this playing out? This is the biggest question, I agree, I think, of this offseason defensively for the Ravens. I think my gut says he's back here in Baltimore. He has said he wants to stay here. We did a podcast with him last week, and we asked him, what's the percentage that you're here? And he said, in his mind, it's 100%. Wow. And so he's confident that he's going to be here. He wants to be here. He's done everything right since the Ravens drafted him in the first round, made the Pro Bowl four out of five seasons. He's the leader there in the middle of that defense. And as you move forward, there's going to be a lot of change on this defense, which is what we're going to talk about. But you want a steady piece, somebody to move forward as your anchor of the defense. He's already proven that he can be that guy. And I think that the Ravens want to do everything they can to keep him here in Baltimore. John, I think you were on the show at some point during the year where we asked the question, do you pay him? him Luke Keekley money and I, I don't want to put words in your mouth but I think you were of the side that said maybe not to that level but do you think the way this season ended and to Garrett's point his value may be increasing that that that's yeah. changed I think his value might be increasing and uh, I think he's a guy that you need to pay uh, I don't know whether you make him the highest paid you know these things are always fleeting mm -hmm. he's the highest paid linebacker until well, the someone next guy. else yeah. uh, will become it you, you can't let that get in the way is my opinion I think you do you need the guy do you need him on your team and and more importantly what if he's not there what if he's not there I think this is a guy especially if you're looking not to get ahead of ourselves if you know Terrell Suggs is in here or, and who knows Eric Weddle I mean you need the leader he's the leader of this defense and it was a great defense this year find a way to get him back and I, if that means paying a lot of money I say pay him yeah, money always talks, but I think C.J. feels he has some unfinished business here. And as Garrett mentions, he wants to be here. And I think that he's a guy who, in his prime years, you don't have to worry about C.J. when he gets the money, how he's going to be. A great character guy, well-respected. He only wants to get better and could get even better than he is now. So, durable. He checks all the boxes. So, in this case, yeah, I think the Ravens know his value. And if they get anywhere close to what C.J. thinks his value is, I think they'll make it happen. Well, John, you've got tenure on this couch, so I'll give you the, the old man question here. Oh, he's God. not an old man, but Terrell Suggs. And he said flat out he wants to play. He's going to play somewhere next year. He'd obviously love for it to be here. How do you view the decision to make with such an important piece of this organization but a guy that's getting up there in age? Well, he is. I mean, and he played well this year. I mean, he was a solid player. Uh, you know, he, he generated a lot of sacks and pressure, did stuff, held the edge pretty well. But uh, I think there's some things working against him here. I mean, you know, the, the reality is look at the history of this organization. I know we're going to have a new general manager here. These decisions are seldom made with romance in mind. I mean, look at Ed Reed. It happens. And so I think this is what the salary cap does. If you have young guys ready to take over, Matt Judon finished this season really strong it becomes a very difficult thing for the older guy. And I don't know. Uh, I mean, I would love for them to find a way. And if he's willing to take a small deal and come back, I think yeah. that's possible. If it's a sizable deal, I think he could price himself out of here. I don't know that he's going to get a sizable deal. That's what I question. Like, I think maybe if you sign into a two-year Eight million dollars. Would he take that? So you're paying him four million a year. I think that would probably be a win-win for both sides. I don't really know that his persona translates as well. I mean, he has built obviously himself. Yeah. In That's Baltimore. a great point. I, I, and I think it speaks to, and, and you can keep going here, but just the value of some guys with this team. Yep isn't yep. translatable to other teams across the league. He can be who he is here, and he has built up that personality. He has built up that leadership. I see, think it would be difficult to go somewhere else and try to fall in line, kind of feel out what your role is on the team. Are you the guy in the middle of the huddle? Do you just hang in the background? Sizzle's not a guy who likes to hang in the background. I think that this is a win to keep him here if he wants to continue playing, and I don't necessarily think – he signed a bunch of contracts. This would be his fourth contract, right? I don't think that he needs this huge deal because because he's already earned so much, probably a small amount of money will keep him here. And if he wants to play, you might lose it, Darius Smith. So you want to keep some guys at that position, I think. Yeah, and Cliff, I'll, I'll task you with maybe the most challenging question here, and, and Garrett just touched on it. There's a lot of other names across this front seven, whether it's Zadarius, Michael Pierce, Brent Urban. Some of these guys are restricted, I understand that. But how do you view that front seven 
playing out if if you were in charge and you thought it would be best for this team uh, continuing to be as dominant as they have been? Well, I, you know, I love uh, the front seven, the way it's constructed now. I know there's going to be some change, but I think chemistry was a big factor in the Ravens' success this year. It wasn't just their physical ability. They certainly weren't the fastest defense in the league, but they were definitely one of the smartest, and statistically they were the best. And I think the chemistry, along with Wink Martindale, played a big role in that. He gave a lot of license to players like Weddle and Suggs and Mosley to call plays, to do things they wanted to do, and it was successful. So I think that obviously all these guys aren't coming back, but you have to take that into consideration when you're thinking about who you want to bring back and who don't. You don't want to change the identity and the chemistry of this defense, I don't think, too much because it was the best in the NFL and what they did worked. So, Cliff, am I reading you right then, and, and you guys can chime in on this, that you're saying the value of chemistry and fitting in with what this defense's culture's like maybe is more valuable than youth or your statistics over the course of the 16 games. Yeah, I mean, it's the ultimate team sport, football is. And again, they weren't the fastest defense. They weren't the youngest. But it, the pieces fit well together. So when they lose, they are going to lose a couple of players. They have to take that into consideration, bringing guys in who fit what they did because they have a formula for success. I can't remember how many years ago it was where Steve Bashotti basically gave a tip on, you know, the way they look at things uh, as an organization. They like to pay ascending players. Mm -hmm. uh, he said that in the year in review press conference one year, and I've always remembered that. Think about that. You know, if they're going to pay up for certain people, they want players who are ascending. So mm -hmm. think about who, who, fought, who fits that bill. I think Zadarius Smith probably fits that bill. You know, he's the guy that we're talking about. However, it's ascending to a certain point too and how high. much. Exactly. <laughs> ascending too and, high. And I think that we've talked about his before. I think he's going to be in that camp of a Pernell McPhee or Donnell Ellerby yeah. that goes out there and gets a huge contract somewhere else. He was pretty much point blank saying that this year, that he's playing for a contract. Yeah. I think he's going to get that and probably go elsewhere. The other one that we haven't talked about is Eric Weddle. Weddle basically said, it does do we want – if they want me, I will stay. Mm -hmm. you yeah, know? I mean, look, that's where we're heading with this thing. These are two players, Eric Weddle, and then I'll throw Jimmy Smith in this as well, that fall right on that line, John and, and, and Garrett. This is challenging. I mean, for it Eric is. DaCosta to have to look at this and say, if that's, if that's the, the, the sort of a, the philosophy of the owner who makes all the decisions, but also you're, you're really blowing up a lot of the things that, that Cliff laid out that have made yep. this defense great. And Weddle's the key to that, really, I think, in terms of instructing everybody where you want to go. That is what they, I think that coaches have to answer, and I can't answer this question, is how much of the success of the defense was because Weddle is such a genius in terms of being a coach on the field and getting everybody in the right position and the communication. Because there weren't a ton of plays, but he does a lot behind the scenes that we don't necessarily know notice before the whistle how much of that is the reason the Ravens were number one and, and one last one last question on this for er everybody is this because often when you see players like Suggs Weddle the, it, guys north of 30 in that range they'll re-up them because they feel like we're close we're close to making a run but you have to factor in as we've done in this entire offseason edition of the show is this team with Lamar now the guy really one or two steps away where you keep a lot of old guys to, to make the run I think that this team could be one step away. You want to have a great defense with Lamar. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, you got to feel like you can make something happen next year for sure. So, yeah, yeah, keep the defense together as much as you can. Yeah, I'd adjust, but I would not blow it up. Would not blow it up. Well, the, the defense, I think, is going to present the most interesting offseason for this team. But coming up, we're going to break down what Lamar Jackson looks like in 2019. For more, head to BaltimoreRavens.com.